So as we left it, we just used a blitter function and a frame buffer to create my little aeroplane sprite. So let's just run that again to see wh where we are. So there's my little aeroplane. And if you remember, I can draw it anywhere on the screen. So now what I want to do is, is just go to this UFO code. And when I ran this code, it was running quite slow. For every single one of these UFOs, it was going through that string and creating each of these graphics, drawing this rectangle every time. What I'm going to do today is convert this code here into the sprite code that I used on my little blitter program here. So what have we got to grab from this? Well, first of all, let's take the screen buffer and the frame buffer and the plane sprite. Let's just copy that information, put that into the start of, where shall I put it? Put it about here to begin with. Let's change that to UFO buffer, UFO sprite. Actually, that's UFO array, isn't it? UFO array, UFO, the buffer really, but let's just leave that as it is. And the screen buffer is so I can access this screen buffer up here. In fact, let's move that back up to here next to the original display stuff. So I've got my UFO array and I've got my UFO sprite. Now I need to sort of work out the height and width of that. So I've got a feeling these, these numbers might be wrong, but uh, we'll come back to that. Right now this time, I don't think I'm going to have a draw UFO. I think I'm going to call it make UFO. So let's change this to make UFO. I don't need that. That was previous code. And notice that I've always got a size here, although I pick a random size up here for it. At the moment, I'm always defining this size at two. I'll leave it like that. That's fine. This now is going to be a UFO sprite. Maybe on this, I can get rid of the pen because we don't use the pen in the frame buffer. Change display to UFO sprite. Then it was fill rect, wasn't it? Fill, fill rect. We don't need to send a pen in. We're not sending a, a radius in. And in fact, we don't need X and Y either, do we? Just for completeness, let's just put X, naught, Y. It's always going to be there, that row. I'm just changing this code. Obviously, this code could be optimised. I probably don't need these, but just to try and keep this as similar to what my original code was, because what I want to do is run both of them and compare them side by side afterwards to see whether the one with my Blitter Sprite is quicker than the one with the string graphic that I'm creating here. In fact, if I'm doing that, let's just stop this, do file, save as, and UFO blit pi. If I run this, I'm not sure what's going to happen now, but let's run it. Buff isn't defined. Well, <laughs> we'll come back to that. So UFO sprite column, and that's the same. That processing will always be the same. We don't need to worry about the color. So let's, oh no, no, we do need the color, sorry. But we need to add the color here. So just something different from the first UFO. I've just set this green up there. So let's just say that's green. Well, we've still got to do some more things. So that makes the UFO. So the first thing we've got to do when we initialize, you just make that graphic. So let's do make UFO there that will run the graphic. Shall we try running this? Let's see if it does anything. Run. All right. So name buff isn't defined. Line 12. Oh, that's all right. So I've forgotten to import the buffer from there. So let's pop that in at the top. Buffer is buff. All right, so that's fine. Draw UFO doesn't exist anymore because I've changed it. So hopefully I can stop there and get control again. No, looks like I've killed it. Let's connect it again. Anything that's gone wrong is likely going to be because I've got these numbers wrong. So we have to fiddle about with those afterwards. There's made my UFO. And we're going to need draw UFO as well. You note from this that all my aliens are going to be the same colour. So let's now do draw UFO. And this should just be the blit. So let's grab it from here. It was this, wasn't it? Draw UFO, we've got to have an X and a Y. Paste that 
there, making sure I've got the right tab space and plain sprite has got to be replaced with UFO sprite. This bit's all right. I want to leave this in here. A lot of this is superfluous now, but it's comparing the speed of the sprite routine. So I set the pen. That's fine. Clear. Then I don't need to set this pen here for the UFO. But here, draw UFO. I've got my X. I've got my Y. Don't think I need my radius anymore. And I don't need the pen. All right. Let's uh, just check whether that works. All right. Now I've discovered that when you get a fuzzy screen like that, it's likely that there's a memory problem. So before we're actually getting to anything here, the memory is going kaput. So I'm sure it's something to do with this byte array here. Now I don't really know how big this byte array needs to be. All right. So that's width time height times two for that 15. And then it's seven wide. Let's let's try that and then times two. I'm just copying this this buffer up here. This frame buffer is probably going to be the same thing, say 15 and 7. Let's see what that does. OK, so I've crashed again, so I need to do a reset. Wish I'd got my other pie with the buttons on it. Might have been easier, but I want to do like for like here. Let's try again. All right, I'm still getting vzzzed. I've got something else here. I've got can't convert float to int. So line 109. What's that? Oh, I've just missed, missed the int out to start with. Ah, oh, there are things moving and things moving a lot quicker. But by the looks of it, I've not got the size of the sprite right here. I mean, I don't know if you notice, but this is moving a lot quicker than the other one. But uh, we'll compare afterwards. So let's just change this bit by bit. And then I'm going to change that I'm not sure how to do this. Well, let's change that to 30 and then change that to, I'm going to say 15, which is 14 doubled and a bit. <laughs> so let's stop that and try again. OK, so just a little bit of a fiddling about with those figures there. Confusing myself. We've got our little aliens now. I don't know if you can see, but the border you can actually see the square that defines the alien i've created the ufo in a block a lot of the color in that block is black and when they move over each other you can see the black corners now in the blitter thing i didn't show you this last time but there's one color that you can ignore so when you do this blitter bit if you add one color will say the color black and we know black is absence of any other numeric value so it's naught 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 is black the pen so it will be naught however it's encoded so let's just uh, stop that and try again and hopefully you'll see that all of the ufos um, now don't have that black box around them so this is our sprite routine working now the only thing that's slightly different is we don't have a different shades of green let's not worry about that i would have different frame buffers of different colors maybe to do that and just decide which frame buffer to show for each ufo based on a random number so let's just stop that and reload my old ufo code remember we've tried to keep the code the same all the other calculations and everything else has been the same apart from that on the old ufo we're going through this ufo grid and individually drawing this tangles in there to make the pixels to do that on my new version i do this once and then use a blitter to put it into the frame buffer of the display so let's just have a look at this here we go. Look at that. Can you see? You can actually see the individual steps each of the UFOs is making. But if I stop that and run my Blitter version, you almost can't see the steps. So that's one step further to my Sprite engine. Sorry, Captain.